Well, my brush hurts. Well, it's snowing. This was kind of a surprise. I didn't plan on doing this today. But for some reason, Mother Nature has her ways. and uh, get some plowing now, I guess. Oop, they're locked. Yeah, they just keep extending these weather storms and, uh, and why saying he... it's only going to be an inch and then all of a sudden now we are here in this uh, three, four inches. So, yep, now we got to go plow. Okay, so pre-trip before we take off, I'm gonna do a quick walk around. Let's get over the hit the items that we should cover before we take off. Uh, first thing being headlights, we want to check high beams, low beams, turn signals, all that. Again, here's another. Those are gonna be off because the plow lights are on. There's a switch in the cab, flip from plow to truck, but those still work as turn signals. Beacon light, I already checked that, switch in the cab. Just make sure that works as a safety concern for other drivers on the road, as well as for us. Uh, marker lights on top of the cab. We got marker lights here. Before we pass by the front wheel, Oop. kick the uh, tire, visually inspect it, make sure it's got enough tread on it, no damage. You're checking for air in the tire. Make sure your fuel caps are on. I don't know why, but in the wintertime, we seem to lose fuel caps a lot. Mud flaps, everything's secure. Marker lights tail lights reverse lights that's a we got hardwired in reverse lights on this truck you can see we got a marker light out marker lights aren't the end of the world make sure our mud flaps are good to go tires again i'm not actually going on plowing right now this truck's just in the shop so it's my example truck marker lights uh mirrors and lights there are mirrors and windows make sure those are clean before you take off um, something as simple as Windex or like a squeegee bucket like you see at the uh, the gas station before you leave. I like this to be clean long before I even get think about leaving. Front tires again. Just do a once over on the whole truck, make sure everything's working. Uh, pop the hood, We're checking the engine oil, coolant levels, washer fluid, brake fluid, power steering fluid. Um, I would pop the hood and show you, but all of our trucks are different, so really doesn't make a difference um coolant level we're checking that when it's cold making sure our washer fluids topped off because you're going to need that the salty slushy conditions that this truck's going to be out in make sure your four-wheel drive works make sure it'll shift in the four-wheel drive check make sure you got bags of salt in the bucket and the scoop shovels all that sort of stuff i'm gonna turn the beacon on real quick that was just working Interesting. That was literally just working. Huh. I I just made a video of this working, but I had to edit the video because I ran out of space. Interesting. Oh, we're gonna make sure the plow is operational. Make sure the controller lights up. Plow goes up and down, side to side, all that sort of stuff. Make sure our backup alarm works. Just do it once over, five minutes or less. Make sure the truck's operational. It could save you from getting out there to your first property and then something not working and then having a huge problem. So. Mm. Double, double for you Timmy fans out there. Okay, well, this video I'm going to do a little different than most um, because I don't know how much more snow we're going to have the rest of the year. So I'm going to do a little how-to video because it's hard to teach employees that are new on how to plow when there's literally no snow on the ground come uh, November, December of this year. 
Right now it's Jan it's not January, geez. It's February. And I actually have some snow on the ground, so I figured I better make this video before I run out of time. So, without further ado, I'm gonna do a little how-to on plowing commercial parking lots. Now, right now, what I'm doing is opening up the entrance. This entrance is uh, pretty wide, but I'm, right now I'm parallel with the road, and I'm kind of cleaning up what the town plows have pushed off the road. And I'm gonna start with that, and then I'm gonna flip around and I'll do the other way here in a second. And then we'll get into it. But I always start by clearing off the, uh, the apron, so to speak, because um, I wanna get out of traffic. Especially right now during the day, there's a lot of cars out. I don't want to be backing into traffic all the time. So start by cleaning up the apron. Okay, now that I got the intro or the uh, the apron here opened up, the next thing I want to go after is employee parking spots. Obviously, you can tell in the camera there's already cars here, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult for me to uh, get what I need cleaned up as much as I want. Oh, so you gotta always watch out. There's a mailman just pulled in behind me. These people don't care. Um, but like I was saying, I always try to go after the employee parking spots next because they're the ones that are going to pull in and they're going to be in your way. So you want to get those cleaned up, which might require you jumping around the lot in order to get them done or just know when they show up. You know, I have some customers that they show up at 4 a.m. So I can almost never beat them there and I just deal with it. But some others, they don't show up till 8 so I know I have some extra time to uh, clean up and whatnot when no one's in my way. Okay, so what I'm doing now here is cleaning up next to these cars and continuing um, cleaning up where the cars are parked. But at the same time, what I'm doing is I'm cleaning up an area that I can safely back into and not be just packing snow on top of itself over and over and over and over again. So you'll see me clean up next to these cars and I'm going to just work my way away from the building. And then when I get going on my longer passes, I'm going to back into that already cleaned area. When I back into that cleaned area, I know that it's safe there's nothing back there for me to back into obviously circumstances change somebody parks there but there's not going to be a sign where you've already plowed or a telephone pole or a tree or a mailbox in something that's clean pavement so that's what we're looking to do here Okay, the next thing I'm going to roll into here is pushing snow against along the edge of the building. Um, you can see I got my plow right up to the edge of the building. There's not a whole lot of snow. Sometimes if there's more snow, what I'll do is I'll just move over half a pass and try to push the bulk of it out. Because if you plow a lot of snow, you know that you always get runoff on the opposite side of what you're trying to push. In this case, there wasn't much, but something to consider, uh, consider a little could help you out. Uh, you see I just turned back around. Video's kind of chopped up, but I'm trying to get my point across. 
Now I'm just going to start by angling my blade to the left and pushing the snow to the left away from the building as I keep continue going. You'll note some dumpsters there. That's something you don't want to block in. You want to open those up enough now before it uh, it all freezes because once it freezes, you're not going to be able to move that with your truck. And then I'm just going to basically start pushing my lanes down. This one's got a loading dock in the middle of the lot, so it's going to be a little bit more difficult because I have to stop halfway. But you can see... The idea is to get the snow away from the building first and then work on the wide open areas. Kind of doing a trim type deal and then getting into the bigger and bulkier stuff as we go through. I believe it's on this pass. Yep. On this pass, I'm going to continue right on through, right to my pile. And I, I don't know if you just noticed, I straightened my blade out and I put it right in the pile. Now I'm backing up and I'm backing up in the same exact lane that I just, uh, I just plowed. This is another thing I talked about earlier about safety. If you back up in the same lane, you're just plowed forward, the chances of something being right behind you are slim. Now I'm going to move over, drop my blade again, and start wind rowing to the left. Taking off about half a blade bite at a time. Because if I take off a full blade, I already know I'm going to have run off the other way, and that means I'm going to spend more time cleaning up than I want to. So here's my second pass right through. Heading right towards the pile. I'm going to hit the pile, lift it up, and kind of stack it. We'll talk about that in a minute. And I'm going to start backing up again into the lane that I had just plowed. Okay, I just talked about this a second ago, but dumpsters, make sure you clean those things open, open wide. Garbage truck's a lot bigger than a car and probably wider than those dumpsters. So. Make sure you get in there and clean those things up nice and wide for them. Sometimes you got a dumpster cage, you got to go around. This one's just out in the middle of the lot, so. Okay, so now I'm going to be rolling into the wide open part of the lot. I'm going to be pushing snow from right to left, as you can see in the video here. And I'm not taking off a full blade bite. Take off about half a blade bite, and that's how I'm going to keep my snow contained to the plow. Uh, right now about four inches out there probably and I'm doing good with keeping control of it. You see the telephone pole and the tree over there on the left? That's where I gotta push to. So I'm basically just gonna be doing the same thing over and over and over again. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And obviously keeping your head on a swivel. You see that white box truck right there? That guy came in behind me. I didn't even see him and it was quite the surprise to me. So now it's just repetition. Stay safe. Back into the same lane you already plowed. I already said that, but you know, got to reinforce those things. And another thing is, this particular site isn't the same for every. This this doesn't work for every site. You have to adjust accordingly for what you're working on. But the principles still all stay the same. Back in the same lane, watching out for people, cleaning up employee parking spots, and cleaning the apron are all things that can be done first and can be repeated and put everywhere. Now technique in the lot in particular is going to be different everywhere. So that is what it is. Okay, now we're going to talk about stacking snow. I'm pretty sure I come back right about now and do another stack. Here we go. So I'm going to drop my blade. in. It's a V-blade. I'm going to put it in scoop mode for this position. Hit the pile, drive into it, nice and gentle, and lift. All at the same time, one repetition. That's going to get me my stacking ability. Now, I can't stack in a V. I can't stack in an angle left or angle right. So my plow either has to be straight or in scoop mode. In scoop mode, you can see that works pretty well. I'm not sure if I'm going to do it again here with the, the flat mode. But either way, you can still stack. Okay, we're coming towards the pile. Coming towards the pile, getting close. Boom, straighten the blade out. Lift and stack. When I'm stacking, don't drive into the pile 100 miles an hour. Slow, consistent pace is what you want. That's going to make sure the hydraulic wings don't uh, hydraulically release under too much pressure, and they're going to stay forward as much as possible. So we'll do it one more time, I think. Drive in, drive in, drive in. I see right now I'm angled to the left to get into the pile. I'm going to scoop mode and lift and stack and back up. Do it again. Okay, let's talk quick about loading docks. 
Uh, right now you can see I'm going into a loading dock. It's just a single single dock and I have to backtrack it out. So pulling in. I want to be in full wheel drive for this because I tend to be backing uphill most of the time. And this is going to take me a couple swipes just because when you back drag it doesn't seem to scrape as well. So I start in the center and then I work my way out closer to the edge. I'm not getting too close to the rails on either side because then I could damage the truck and really for what doesn't really do anything. <clears throat> as long as the, they can get the truck in and out, that's all that counts. And most of the time they're, they have a trailer on and that trailer in, is going to be in the dock and the truck will be having traction up right about where I am now. So just back drag it out and then scoop it up and take it off to the side. Okay, now I'm going to do a little quick hit on plowing parking spots like this. If you look on the right there, you see an island. What I did over there, I just pointed to on the left. I'm swooping into there, and I'm pushing right to the end of the lot, and then I'm working from the building away. You can see I swooped in right along the curb there, and my pile is right down here at the dumpster. Off on, there's an island there. I just dump everything off onto there. But I'm going to turn around now and come back in and then get whatever I missed. Now that I got this opened up, here I come, right along the curb, touch the curb with the blade. I'm going to push and then clean up all this little, whatever I could not turn into the first time. Okay, let's talk real quick about residential plowing because most of us probably do both. There's probably a few that just do commercial, but we do residential and commercial, so I want to talk about them. Right now, only about three inches in the driveway. You can see there's a truck in the driveway. Pretty easy driveway. I'm pulling up. To the truck, I'm going to back drag. Be careful of mailboxes behind you. You can see I left a little bit of snow there from my uh, what I had sitting on the front of my plow from the last driveway. But back drag, scraping really nice too. I back drag it basically right until it's on the shoulder of the road. A little bit farther back than you'd probably like on the road. And that'll come into play in just a second. So I'm pulling up. I already know that I can't fit in between this truck and the drive and the and the edge of the driveway, so I'm not even going to bother with that. And we're just back dragging, waiting for cars to pass by. And we're going to do that one more time. Now another option, there's, a, there's quite a few ways to do residential driveways. One other option, if you have the space, and not this truck is in the way for this, is to push forward in and dump all the snow off on the side over on the left side right where that red truck would be that's another option it doesn't really work as well in this situation because I'd be putting snow right next to the house and back dragging quite frankly worked very well here so you can kinda see I'm out onto the road with it be careful of mailboxes behind you we've backed into those before because they just you just don't catch them now I'm gonna come and clean up the pile. Now the pile's out at the street, backing up. See what I mean? I'm dumping it on the shoulder of the road, right on the white line, really. I'm going to swoop in, put this thing in a V, and I'm going to pile it all out right at the street. Drop, push it across. This method here I like because it, it provides minimal turf damage. I mean, it's, it's bound to happen, especially with a newer operator. Um, but this leaves all your turf damage in one spot. If you go pushing up forward and you get off just a little bit, you could really do some uh, significant damage. Where if you're putting all the snow in one spot, you only if you come back in the spring and fix it, you only got to fix one spot. And like I said, this worked out pretty well here. Good neighborhood, good driveway, just the best of the best right here of what I could get. And it, it made for a good video. That's why I'm using it. Okay, so this concludes our video about plowing, uh, our training video on plowing at least. I might add some more later on and make some adjustments, but at the end of the shift, I prefer that you rinse off the truck, get in the, the wheel wells. I don't want, I don't care if you don't scrub it, just rinse off all the salt, clean the windows so you can see for next time. You see I'm washing off the toolboxes and getting everything real clean. Clean the windows so next time it's nice and dry and clean so you can see. All right, well, finish out your day by cleaning the truck like you just saw. 
restocking supplies like our salt for sidewalks and making sure everything's back intact put the truck away this one's just going outside right now because our building's full but typically they go inside the building keys out and uh, plugged in if it's cold enough All right, so that wraps up this video. Hope you guys liked it. Remember, if you did like it, hit that subscribe button and the like button, share and comment. That lets me know that you like the video that I'm putting out. All right, and uh, have a good one.